You know, this uh, this week talking to Jasmine, who's working in North Carolina and, and coming here and back and forth and and asking her about, you know, the music uh, for this Sabbath. She said, well, you know, we have uh, Onika down for for about a week and and uh, says, so, well, who's singing this week? She said, uh, you know, Holandro and, and Alethea are going to be uh, leading out. I said, oh, just Holandro and Alethea? I don't, I don't know how many of you know, and I want to tell you, too, that I appreciate you guys. And I don't want to exalt you as people, but exalt your ministry. Uh, you don't know how many churches in South Florida would love to have the two people we had leading out today in worship in their churches. I, I myself ask myself why Alethea has committed to this church the way she has. Alethea is a professional at what she does. She's not just someone who sings a professional at what she does. Orlando is also. You know, and, and for this little church to have them here, I, I want to let the two of you know that I know, I know what we have. I know how special you are. And I want to let you know that we appreciate you. We appreciate you. Uh, and, and today I don't want to, uh, you know, I'm not saying this to blow your heads up. I'm saying I want to exalt the ministry that God has given you. And that your ministry works. And that your ministry changes lives. And that your ministry leads the church to worship. Leads the church to, to, to the throne of God. And, and uh, I just want to recognize that today. And let you know that although you know that God loves you and that God appreciate your ministry that the church also recognizes that and appreciates that we also want to thank our band we have an amazing band thank you guys uh, <clears throat> this band has been here all through this pandemic <laughs> all through this pandemic have been here playing even when there was just us here, that's it. Praise leaders and band, that's it. And, and Martin back there with the sound. And Martin back there with the sound. And, and when, we've had, uh, when we've had Raw, Raw back there, we're still praying for Raw. Raw is getting better. We need to remember to continue praying for Raw. And him back there serving. And, uh, and now we have two beautiful young people back there who have shown up how God has did an amazing job that they're, they're doing. Uh, they're back there helping out with the, with, with the computer. And uh, I don't know how many of you guys, when you come to church, you see our, our parking lot is always clean and everything. You know, Edwin said that back there. He just had brain surgery about a month ago, right? And this man comes up and he cleans the parking lot every Saturday. It's a ministry that no one sees. Every Saturday morning, comes up, cleans it up, leaves the church open for the team that comes in, does all of that before anybody gets here, and then goes home and comes back to worship. And no, you know, it's a ministry. It is a ministry. And no one sees that, but I, you know, well, you know, I've known uh, we go way back. Edwin, and when he decided to come to this church, him and Cello, they showed up the other day to help me put this up back here, also for the Christmas program. They love to serve. They, they, they love to serve. Uh, Cello, she is uh, also, I don't know if you know, Edwin's wife, Cello, she is, uh, she's an artist. And she actually wants to start a ministry of teaching to, to, to draw teaching to do portraits pictures so if there's any i know uh let me tell you uh i some years ago my wife took some classes for her 
And my wife did some beautiful pictures. It, it was amazing the, what she was able to do. She is great at teaching. So I would love to, you know, I know she wants to do this ministry here in church. If there's people who want to join that, and you'd be surprised what you're going to be doing in about a month. You know, the, the pictures and the beautiful stuff you're going to be doing, you know, for our children or people. But anyway, I'm sorry, but I just, uh, I, we, we have to recognize some people in church, you know. And I know sometimes we miss out on some people, but church doesn't just happen by one or two people. It, it, it's a group of all, of all of us doing things together. Uh, that this is what makes this place uh, what it is. And if I miss some of you, I'll catch you at another time. Uh, but it's just, it's just God recognizes you. God is what, what you do. But the church must also recognize the things that, that, uh, that are being done. Let us bow our heads for prayer this morning. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your blessing. And we thank you for giving us the opportunity to be here and to worship you and to be with you. We thank you, Lord, for your love. We thank you for all of the blessings that you have given us. And we ask, Lord, that you may be with us today as we share your word. May your Holy Spirit give me wisdom, give me words. May your Holy Spirit translate this message according to people's needs. That no one that has come here today may leave empty. That they may know that you have spoken to them. And that you have given them a word of hope. A word that will bring them closer to you. We ask all this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Today I want to talk to you. We're beginning a new year. And I want to talk to you about a God of new beginnings. I believe one of the, few, one of the things that I, that I see about God. As you read the scriptures from beginning to end. You see that God is constantly a God of new beginnings. One of, the, one of the great things about video games is that I'm not, I'm not into video games, but I remember as, as a kid, you know, we had uh, growing up, I was maybe 18, 20 years old, and you had the Pac-Man game, you know, when that Pac-Man game came, came out, you know, and, and, you know, you went in there and you, and, you, and you put your quarter in or whatever, you know, and, hey, if you messed up three times, remember three times, you had three chances, you messed up three chances, you were done, that's it. You know, now, uh, you know, my grandson and my grandchildren and others, you know, they, you know, they have these games and now you can get on computer games, right? That if, that if you, if you mess up, you just hit reset, right? Boom. And you begin all over again. You just hit reset, boom. And you're, and you're, and you're an and you can try again and you can lose as many times as you, as you want. And you can always just hit that reset button and you can start all over. One of the great things about God is that God also has that reset button. Yes. God also has that reset button that God at no point abandons you. At no point he leaves you behind and says, that's it. You've left. You've messed up too many times. Do you mess up three times? Yeah, that's it. Three strikes. You're out. You know, you've messed up all these times. That's it. You're done. God is a, is, is a God of new beginnings. And here we are, we are in, in beginning a new year. A new year is, is, is symbolic for a lot, of, a lot of humanity here on earth. It's symbolic for us. It's, it's, it tells us that, you know, that we can start all over, that we can do things, that we can start something new, that we can leave something behind. And one of the things I appreciate about God and Moses is the opportunity that he gives us. No matter what we've done, no matter what we are, he gives us the opportunity to start over, to hit a reset button with him. You know, in, in 1 John 1, 19, uh, we came in this morning and, and, I, and I, I forgot to give all of my verses to the, to the team back there. So please don't blame them. It's, it's my fault. Uh, in case they want to record this, the title of the sermon is A God of New Beginnings. A God of New Beginnings. And I didn't give them the, the verses. Okay, so it's not their fault. It's completely mine. Uh, 1 John 1, 9 says, 1 John 1, 9 says, If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That at any time... 
Our sins can be forgiven. He is faithful. That means he is faithful. That means you can trust him. It will happen. He is faithful to forgive us our sins. He is faithful to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So now as we look, we're looking at a new year. Maybe we didn't do certain things. Maybe, maybe we, we, we messed up on certain things. And you know, my, and my, my, my wife and I were, were talking about this this morning during breakfast. And, and, and we were talking about sin. And, and, and we were talking about, you know, you know, David's sin. And I was telling her, I said, you know, one of the things that I learned about David's sin is this. That covering up, the act of covering up your sin is a worse sin than the original sin. Okay, the act of covering up your sin is usually worse than the original sin. See, when he committed adultery with Bathsheba and he would have just said, you know what, I sinned. But the act of covering up the sin take, took him into murder. So the, the act of covering up and lying about our sin actually makes the situation worse. And is usually a worse act than the original sin itself. So if we if we are if we are if we are sincere with ourselves and we recognize our sin, all we have to do is understand. You don't have to cover it up. You can need to understand that 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 if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. You see, when you sin. And you begin to cover it up and cover it up. Pretty soon after covering it up so much and lying about it so much, man, if you're, if you're going to fix that, you're going to have a long road back. You're going to have a long road back. And if you did it too much, now you got to live with that. Now what do you do with that? You understand? Now what do you do with that? Well, the Bible says, tells us, you know what, little children, I know you're going to sin. I know you're going to sin, but I want you to know that there is a solution to your sin. If you, are, if you confess your sin, it says he is faithful to forgive you. Isaiah 43, Isaiah 43, 25 also tells us the following. Isaiah chapter 43, verse 25 says, I, even I am he who blots out your what? Your transgression, we're talking about a new year. We're talking about beginning. We're talking about hitting a reset button. And I want you to really stick that in your, in your mind today. Hitting, a, hitting that, I want you to today to hit that reset button. That I'm not only telling you if you've been good. I'm telling you if you've been good, you can hit a reset button to be better. I'm not only going to talk about your sins, I'm talking about this, you know, the, the mindset of saying, you know what? I'm going to be better. I am going to grow spiritually, you know, because we talk about how the world is going and it's tough. Inflation is going and boom, boom. And we got, we got all these things going and, and we're worried about, and we're worried about all these things. I think we need to be worried about our spirituality more than about anything else. Because anything can happen. Everything else in this world is uncertain. And we're, and we're worried about all these things. Sometimes I wish we would worry as much as we, about our spirituality, as much as we worry about our finances. That we should worry about our spirituality as much as we worry about, you know, the, 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 the problems that we have in, in our world. <clears throat> And it says, I even I am he who blots out your transgressions, Isaiah 43, 25. I even I am he who blots out your transgressions for my own sake. And it says, and I will not remember your what? Your sins. That is amazing. How can God do that? How can God really do that? How can God forget that? He chooses he chooses to not remember. He chooses to not hold you accountable for your past. 
He doesn't, you know, he doesn't, you know, go back, you know, you know, sort of like, you know, when you're arguing with your wife or whatever, you know, and, and you're arguing about a certain point and you always know when one of you is losing the argument. Okay, you always know because the minute you're arguing about a certain point, right? And then one of you, you, you feel like you're losing the argument. What do you do? You open that drawer and you bring something from the past. Right? Ah, that means you're losing the argument. You got to bring something else into it now. You're losing this one. Right? But the thing is, where, but God doesn't do that. He chooses to not remember anything from the past. So as we are beginning, you know, a new year, we have an opportunity to reset. We have an opportunity to say, God, you know, uh, because God is a God of new beginnings. He, he does this with us. He does this in the scriptures. He gives us all a new opportunity to begin all over again in Hebrews 10, 17. In Hebrews 10, 17, it says, then he adds, Their sins and their lawless deeds I will remember no more. So people, as we are beginning this new year, I don't know how how it's been for you spiritually. I don't know how 2021 has been with you in your relationship with God. If it's good, if it's been good, I'm telling you it can even be better. If it's good, it can even be better. If it wasn't that good, according to the verses I just read, God is willing to forget the past. God is willing to forget 2021 completely. And he is willing to start with you brand new. Like 2021 didn't even exist. Like if it wasn't there and you can start with a brand new slate with God. God is the God of new beginnings. And he loves to start all over with us. Psalm 103 verse 11 to 12 says, For as the heavens are high above the earth, so great is his mirth see toward those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. The promise of forgiveness, the promise of beginning again. People, I don't know if we, if we appreciate that ability because see, God has given us the ability to do certain things. God has given us the ability of self-perception for us to look at ourselves and see where we are. God has given us that ability. That is a special ability that no other living being has. I mean, my dog, Rocky, my Rottweiler or, my, or, or, or Zeus, you know, they can't say, you know, because I usually get mad at them for one thing. You can't put anything new in the yard without them peeing on it. <laughs> you put a new chair out there, when they all run out there, the first thing they'll do, oh, that's a new chair. That's never been here before. Let's pee on it. It's exactly, they go directly for it. They got to mark it. They got to say, this is my, and, and they line up. First goes one and then the other one. They go in a line. It's incredible. They line each other where one piece, the other one piece. It's like they walk around the yard in a line. You know, they don't have the ability to say, you know what, man? We've been peeing on everything in this yard. We should, we should change. <laughs> you know, we got to start peeing on the trees out there, not on chairs and stuff that Mr. Labrador brings in. This guy feeds us. This guy takes care of us. Yet we pee on everything he brings in. We should change that this year. You know, and make a New Year's resolution. You know, let's only pee on the trees, Okay. Not on chairs or toys. I mean, we bring toys for the kids, you know? Put them out there. Boy, the minute they run out there, oh, oh my God, here's a new toy. Let's pee on it, you know? And they run over there and pee on it. And they got to be wash hosing it down, you know, and all these things. They don't have the ability to do that. No other living being has the opportunity to look at yourself and say, you know what? I, I can change. I want to change. 
I want to be different. And I think that sometimes people, we don't use that as much as we could. We, in fact, we turn into animals by saying, that's the way I am and I can't do anything about it. What you're saying is you're an animal. Okay? You're saying I am an animal. Okay? Because human beings have the ability to say, I recognize what I am, I recognize what I've been doing, and I can be different with God's help. And then God, God comes in and he says, you know why you're saying that? Because my Holy Spirit has put it in your mind that you need to change. The, my Holy Spirit is working in your mind, and you are listening to my Holy Spirit. Okay, now you're listening. I'm going to do something else for you. Whatever the past has been, it's gone, disappeared. Right now, you start with a brand new slate. People, that's an amazing thing. You don't, he tells us, you don't need to feel guilty about it because your guilt, Jesus took it on the cross. You you don't even need to be shameful about it anymore. He took the shame on the cross. You don't need, you can live as if your past did not even exist. You can have a whole new beginning. Oh, that's right. Thank you, Jesus. We need to say thank you, Jesus, for that every single day. Every single day. All things new. One of the things I've appreciated the most about God is the ability to forget the past and be able to have a new beginning. When I started my ministry, and I'm telling you, first of all, my own experience has happened in my life. Man, when I started my ministry, God accepted me. God called me into, into ministry, and God took me in the way that I was. But when I, when I look, when I go, I still have this, there's this little blue book that I have that, that I sometimes find, you know, when you're looking around and you find these little things, you know, there's this little blue book that I have. And I remember, and I, and I still have like my first sermons that I typed out, you know, back then. Man, they were the most legalist sermons I've ever seen in my life. You know, they were, but you know what? People loved it. Yes. They loved being whipped. Whip, whip. You know, you come out of that sermon and the pastor, that's a great sermon. Man. About time somebody tells people the truth, you know, and people loved it, you know, uh, because they love being whipped, you know. But I look back, there was no grace at all. But you know what? God was with me and then God helped me to understand Grace. God helped me to understand grace. God helped me to understand his love. God ha- got me to, under, to, to experience righteousness by faith. Because I always tell people, listen, righteousness by faith, you don't understand it till you experience it. You got to experience it. You got to experience this righteousness by faith for you to understand righteousness by, by faith. And God gave me the, 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 the opportunity, you know, to have a new beginning. He gave me, even while I was in ministry, being, pastoring, he gave me the opportunity to say, listen, here's new light. Here's something I want you to see. And God gave me the opportunity to do that. God gave me the opportunity one day of, 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 of moving my priorities Because my priority at the beginning when I started ministry was my work. That was my priority was my work. Accomplishing my work, being successful as a pastor. And and that was more important than even my relationship with God. And, 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 and I would work myself to the bone and I would, because I wanted to be a successful pastor. I wanted to be the best pastor in the world. And then I realized... I realized that, my, my, that, that I needed a change, and God gave me a chance to do that. You know, I had to go through a burnout time. I had to go through all these, and, but God gave me the opportunity to change my priorities, to make God my priority, to make God and my family my priority. God gave me the opportunity to apologize to my children, to my wife, to say, hey, you know, and things need to change. God has given me the opportunity 
to abandon habits knowing that they will that that, that, that they would be that would come between me and God. And God has given me the opportunity to do that in in my life. And as we look back, I want you to know that no matter where you at in your life, you can change. You can become different. You can add new, new life, new, you can put new life in your life. You can make a, a transformation. You don't have to be who you are because God, because God is a God of new beginnings. The reality that change is possible is an amazing ability, not only for us, but for the fact that change is accepted, is accepted by God as a new creation. With God, there is no past, only the present, as if the past has never existed. And God sees those changes as a new creation, as a new creation. In the book of, uh, we can see some examples of change in the scriptures. Revelation 21, 5, 6 uh, is a verse when God says, Revelation 21, verse 5 to 6, Then he who sat on the throne said, Behold, I make all things, what? New. That is God's motto. God's motto is to make all things new. In your life, in your family, with your children, in your relationships. It doesn't matter what you're going through. God's desire every day is to make every day a new life, to make a new creation within you. We don't have to be who we've been. We can always be better. We can always be greater. We can always have a better relationship with God. We can always be transformed. We don't have to stay. He, then he said, I will make all things new and he said to me write these words are true and faithful and he said to me it is it is done i am the alpha the omega the beginning and the end i will give of the fountain of the water of life freely to him who thirst i will give you your th- i will quench your thirst i will fulfill your needs i will give you whatever whatever you need if you're if you're doing something because see a lot of times we, we depart from God because we think that we have a need that God can't fulfill. Okay? So then we have to step away from God a little bit tonight. Tonight I'm going to step away from God a little bit. Because I need to do certain things that make me happy. I need some me time. Okay? I've been doing this for God, doing this for the church. I've been doing this for other people. I want to do something for me. And that sometimes to do that me stuff, to satisfy me, we think we have to step away from God. And we don't understand that there is no need within a human being that God cannot fulfill unless it is a sinful desire. And a lot of times those things we have to step away from or a sinful desire that now is going to have to, now it leads into a sin, not something that later on you're going to have to ask God to forgive for you. Now now you're going to have to come back and now you're going to have to go through that ordeal and that's okay because you can hit a reset button and God will forgive that also. But you got to go through the pain. There is no sin that doesn't cause pain. Every sin causes pain. Every sin does damage to us. But God can come in and solve and hit that reset button and we can begin all over. But there's no need to to go through that pain. You go through that through the scriptures. Noah, you know, through Noah, we see God in this world hit a reset button. And he goes through the flood. And God now through, uh, through Noah and his children, he begins this world again. He, that's why God is a God of new, of new beginnings. We go through Jacob. 
Jacob was, was a, uh, you know, he was a liar. He had all these things. And, and he went on lying for years, for 20 years, uh, you know, going through all these things, making all these things. Then finally he goes and he's going to meet up his brother. And, and he wrestles with the angel, really with Jesus himself. He wrestles with, with Jesus himself. And he has to hit that reset button. He has to hit a new beginning. And then God even gives him a new name. He says, you shall not be Jacob anymore. You shall be Israel. And he turns him into the father of the nation. He had to hit a new beginning, a new creation. A new man had to be born. A new man had to be born. A new person came out of that wrestling match where he says it shall be Israel because you have wrestled with God. At some point, God gives us the opportunity to wrestle with God, to recognize who we are, to recognize what we've done, to recognize. A lot of times we have to recognize our own uh, uh, character issues that we were born with. A lot of times we have to recognize the home we were brought up and I was brought up this way. My dad and mom thought this way. Boom. And we have to be real with ourselves and we have to say, you know, this is why we are what we are. You know, and we have to study ourselves. But the thing is, we can go to God and God can forgive us and hit that reset button. And now 2022, if you see those things in your life, you can go back and you can change them. You do not have to continue being the same. We're not animals. We're human beings. And God gave us the ability to to look within ourselves. God gave us the ability to change. There's nothing that we have to do. We have the ability to make choices. And we have not only the ability to make choices, that we have a God all powerful who will give us the help that we need to uh, accomplish those things. We look at, at Moses. Wow, we've been studying Moses in our devotionals. The man had a chance to start all over at the age of 80. When he thought it was all done with. And maybe you may think and say, well, 80 years old is a long time because those people in those days lived a long time. No, Joseph died at the age of 110. So 80 was not that young. At that time, okay, and 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 and, uh, and 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 Joseph died over the age of 110, like 300 years before Moses was 80. So 80 was pretty old, and yet God goes and hits a reset button for him at the age of 80. It says, says Moses, now at the age of 80, your ministry begins. What? I already have a new life here. I already have a new life in this desert, the sheep, my wife, my children. And you're asking me to leave all this. And now says, yes, Moses, now is when life really begins for you. At the age of 80, hit that reset button, ready to start, ready to make the biggest transformation in in his life. And between the age of, of 80 and 120, the next 40 years old, Moses Because he was willing to hit that reset button, because he was willing to start all over, is recognized in history as one of the greatest leaders that has ever existed. And he hit that reset button at the age of 80. Joseph had to hit a reset button. Oh, yeah, he was a little spoiled brat at home. Father made little special clothes just for him. He would show off to his brothers how much he was a little spoiled brat. But when he got to Egypt and he was a slave, he had to hit a reset button in his life. He had to say, this baby stuff is done. (laughs) I got to be a man here. And not only be a man, I got to be a man of God. And I can just think of Joseph as, as he's, as he's go- going through this desert and moving, you know, from being a little spoiled brat at home. Now he's tied up and he's chained. There's no hope. There's no nothing. And the only thing that he has is God. Don't you think he had to hit a reset button in his life? Don't you think he had to say childish days are gone? I got to be a man to survive here and not only be a man, but I got to be a man of God to survive. He had to hit that reset button. He had to begin all over. Samson had to hit a reset button, right? Guy messed up his whole life. He was was a good-looking young man. All the women loved him. 
he was all over the place. He was all full of himself. Everywhere he had his girlfriend's big muscles strong. Nobody could hold him back. He was, he was amazing. He was just all into himself. And for being all into himself, he got his eyes plucked out. And he was in prison. He had to hit a reset button. And he was put up that night between two pillars. And he said, God, wow. I'm going to hit a reset button. Wow. God, it's only going to be for a little bit. But I want to start all over with you. And then Samson called the Lord saying, oh, Lord, God, remember me. I pray, strengthen me. I pray just this once. Just this once. He had to hit that reset button. And when he hit the reset button and he asked God to forgive him for all his sins and say, God, just give me your Holy Spirit one more time. Oh, God was so excited to do it. Because you see, God doesn't hold the spirit back from us. God doesn't hold back his forgiveness. God doesn't hold anything, that, any, any of that back. Oh, and immediately when you say, God, I want to start all over with you. I want you to today become the man that you've always wanted to do, that you've always wanted me to be. I want to accomplish that. The spirit of God came upon him and he says that he killed more Philistines that night than he did his whole life. He hit that reset button. And he became, it was a new beginning. It was a whole new creation. And you see people, God wants to hit that reset button in each one of us. And here we have a new beginning. We have a new year. We have a new time. And I think that each one of us, no matter what you're in, I'm not, I'm not only speaking to those who have maybe lived a life of sin in 2021. Or the, No, I don't care how spiritual you've been, how good you've been. I'm telling you, you can be bigger and you can be better. And we can all change and we can all hit a reset button and we can all make some changes in our lives and we can all grow and we can all plan on a better devotional with God. We can all plan on spending a little bit more time with God. We can all plan and say, God, use me. Use me this year. This year, all I've done is sit back, complain or this or that. This year, God, I want you to use me. I want to serve you this year. I want you to use me somehow, somewhere to make a difference. I want to not only love you, but I want to serve you. I want to make a difference and we can, we can make that. David in Psalm 51 verse 7 and 10, boy, he had to hit a real reset button. David had to hit a real reset button. He had deviated from God. He had gotten lazy. God had blessed him so much. He got power. And let me tell you something. Power is something dangerous. Power is so dangerous. He thought he was above the law. He thought he was above God's law. He thought that he was above everything. And that power began to get to his head. And he used to go out and fight with his soldiers. Now he got to the point, I don't need to fight anymore. I don't need, I can just sit back and relax. I don't need, I don't need to do this. I don't need to, to go out there. And, and, and let me tell you something, people. I've told you many times that your calling saves you. Your calling saves you. The spiritual gift that God has given you to serve is, is, is one of God's methods to save you. Okay? When you stop serving God and when you decide to sit back and not serve God according to the gift he's given you, you're putting yourself in a place of danger. That's why a lot of times people tell me, when are you going to retire? How do I retire? <laughs> How do I retire? <laughs> this is not a job. This is my life. How do I, how do I retire from this? Maybe it come the time I'm not going to make, I'm not going to collect any money from it, but I'm still, but I'm still going to be who I am. I'm still going to, I'm still going to preach his word. You know, I'm still going to come around, you know, at 80, preach like one of those like real, real uh, boring sermons. I'm still going to do that. <laughs> You know, and say like real old stories like you've heard 20 times already. 
you know, and I'm going to do that. And, and because you love me, you're going to take it, <laughs> you know, and because you love me, you're going to take it. And, you know, and, and, and I'm still going to be, you know, try to counsel people and I'm still going to try to work with people and I'm still going to be praying for some people. And I'm so how do you how do you how do you retire from that? But David, he took it easy and he stood back in his, in his, you know, he sent his soldiers out to fight. And we know what happened. And David had to hit a reset button in his life. And he said, purge me with hyssop in Psalm 51, verse 7 and 10. Psalm 51, 7 and 10 is a powerful psalm that we've all read many times. We've all his preached. But, but that, psalm, that psalm was a reset button for God. For David, it was a reset button. He he looked at himself and I said, I, I I can't believe how far I've gone. Because you see, people, when when we don't hit that reset button all the time, when we don't hit that reset button all the time, it we 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 tend to just get used to a, a life of sin. We t- we tend to warm up to sin. We tend to see it as something normal. We tend to say, well, you, you know, when people say, well, you do, well, you know, it just proves you're human. No, it just proves you've been away from God for a while. You know, it's not, oh, it just proves you're human. No, God can do anything in your life. Don't underestimate the power of God in our lives and what he can accomplish. And David just, just, you know, he slacked back. And, and, and as I look at this, I don't see this as something that he did from one day to the next. This, is, this was a, 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 a backsliding little by little, little by little. Something. I mean, how do you get to the point, right? So he, so he fought all these battles, killing Goliath, you know, God with him, the spirit of God filling him to, to adultery. And not only adultery, then murder. He murdered somebody. He committed adultery with a man's wife and then he killed him. You don't get to that point from one day to the next. This is years of backsliding. This is years of not hitting that reset button. We can't go long, people, without hitting that reset button and say, hey, boom, I got to get back. I got to be better. In Christian life, you either grow or you die. There's no such thing as, you know, hitting that plateau. No, you hitting that plateau, you're going to go backwards. You, we need to continuously grow. You, we need to hit that reset button. And David had to come back and say, purge me with hyssop and I shall be clean. Wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. Make me hear joy and gladness because sin makes you sad. Sin will destroy you. Sin will, will give you depression. Sin will depart you from God. Sin will make you feel alone. Make me hear joy and gladness that the bones you have broken away rejoice. Can you hear the pain that he's been going through? Can you hear that? Make me hear joy and gladness that the bones you have broken may rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. And listen to this as create in me. That reset button is a new creation. It's a new creation. Create in me a clean heart. See, a clean heart is only something that God can produce. Only God can produce. He recognizes weakness. He recognized that, yes, he was the king. He recognized he had written all these psalms. He recognized all these things, but none of these things were his. They all belonged to God. And when he left God and began to live himself as King David, look what he was capable of. Oh, people, what we are capable of without God what we're capable of without God. We're capable of the worst things, of the worst things that can happen in this world. We all are. We all are. I had the privilege one time of 
visiting a prisoner in, I don't know if you guys have ever heard of Corcoran Prison. Corcoran Prison is a prison in California where one of the worst, uh, Charles Manson was there when I went there to visit somebody. Uh, He's one of the worst prisons in the United States. And I went there to visit a man who had chopped up another man into pieces with a machete. And I went to visit him and to tell him about Jesus. And, and, and I, was, I was sat there and I listened to this man and I listened to this, his story, how he was brought up, the way he was brought up and, and things in his life. After he finished telling me his story, I said, if I would have been brought up in the same way that he was, I would have been 100% capable of doing the same thing. He was so much like me. And the people that are in there in prison, people who've killed, who've killed 20 people, 30 people, you know, you hear about them on TV and you're like, you know, you, you think they're these monsters. If you sit down and talk to them, you will see how much they are just like each one of us. The things that humans are capable of without God. The things that we are capable of when we begin to depart from God and leave them little by little, little by little, like the frog in the kettle, right? Like the frog in the kettle. You want to boil a frog in a kettle, you just put, put it in the kettle and just let the water warm up little by little, little by little. Its body begins to adjust to it till it finally cooks itself. And we sometimes, that happens to us. And David came up and he said, Lord, uh, hide your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart. Oh God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. In other words, don't only, listen to, he says, don't only cleanse me, but give me a new spirit. <laughs> don't only cleanse me, but light me up on fire. So, so I want to become everything that you want me to be. That reset button is not only about forgiveness, it's about becoming something new. It's about becoming something new, something better. But you see, sometimes we can say, well, God, I just want you to forgive me. Forgive my sins. Cleanse my sins. No, David says, renew your spirit within me. Don't just cleanse me, but make me something better. Make me something greater. And that today is what we we need to be. How do we make that change? How do we make that change happen? Philippians 3, verse 13 to 14. Philippians chapter 3, verse 13 to 14 tells us the following. Philippians 3, 13. Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended. But one thing I do. Listen to this. These are instructions, okay? These are instructions from Philippians 3, 13 to 14. I do not count myself as as have to have apprehended, but one thing I do, okay? Forgetting those things which are behind. So if you ask God for forgiveness and you hit that reset button, you keep going, you can't keep going back. You need to look forward. Sometimes people ask God for forgiveness, but they continue to live in their old sin. They continue to, to, to stay, receive their own guilt. The problem with forgiveness is not about being forgiven. The problem with human beings and forgiveness is not about being forgiven. It's about accepting the forgiveness. That's our problem. I want you to know that every sin that has ever been committed in this world was forgiven when Jesus died on the cross. What is the gospel? The gospel is about me telling you that all your sins have been forgiven and you accepting it. That's the gospel. That's the gospel. Jesus is not dying every day. Like Paul says in Hebrew, he doesn't die every day. He died one time and for all. He died for the sins of the babies that are going to be born next month. 
Okay, he died. For, he already died for those sins. The gospel is about humanity accepting that we have been forgiven. The issue of forgiveness is not being forgiven. The issue of forgiveness is accepting that you have been forgiven. It's about that your price has been paid. And us accepting that. So when we're going to hit that reset button, if you hit that reset button, don't keep going back. Live in the joy of forgiveness. Experience the joy of forgiveness. Forgetting those things which are behind, it says, and reaching forward to those things which are ahead. There is an action. Reaching forward. Don't just think about the new things. Begin to do the new things. Put into action your service. Put into action a new life. In other words, live as someone who has been saved. Live as someone who belongs to the king. Put it into action. Believe it. You must believe that God has saved you. Therefore, you live a life as someone who's been saved. You must believe that God has called you to service. Therefore, begin to serve him. You must, you must believe these things. Reaching out forward to those things which are ahead. Reach out for them. I press toward the goal. Of the prize, I press toward the goal of the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. I move forward toward it as an action. We move forward to that salvation. We move forward to that eternal life. We move forward to our life in Christ. We move forward towards that. Second Corinthians, verse five and seven, tells us: Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a what? A new creation. creation. See, hitting that reset button, as you notice, different verses I've given to you today, is about a new creation. It's about a new creation that we can have every time. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. In Luke 9, 62, Jesus said to him, no one having put his hand on the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. I don't know if you guys know, ever seen a plow, right? When I was a little kid, I was five, six years old in Cuba, and we had a neighbor. My father was, you know, and he had been put in prison at the age of, of six until we finally left the country. And um, so I didn't have, my dad wasn't around. And this man called Amado, I was his, his, uh, Last name, if you translate, it says the loved one, Amado. But he, uh, I was a little kid. And when he worked in his farm and stuff, he would take me in and he would, and, and he would, you know, like if I was his kid. And he would, he would teach me to plant tobacco, you know, with your finger in the mud, plant tobacco. And he would put me to work at the age six, seven years old. And he taught me how to plow. And he would have an oxen pull the plow and have me back there. And he'd give me this stick with a nail at the end, you know, to poke the, the oxen. But he said, the way you plow something straight is be when you, on this side of the field, you must put your eye on where you want to go. And you can't be looking around. You got to keep your eye on that. You can't be looking back, can't be looking sideways. You got to keep your eye on that. As long as you keep your eye on that, you're going to hold that plow straight because your plow is going to go where your eyes are. And I remember that story all the time. And I've used that for spiritual lessons. Where are our eyes set? And sometimes we even make the danger of putting our eyes on ourselves. Putting our eyes on ourselves and looking at our own performance as a way of salvation. Paul says here, I mean, Jesus said, Jesus said to him, no one having put his hand on a plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. 
Maybe in hitting that reset button this year is taking the eyes off yourself and putting them on Jesus Christ. Maybe you've been looking at yourself too much. Maybe you've been looking at, I don't have this, I don't have that. If I had this, I would be completely happy. And I would do this. Or, or I'm, I'm, I have these difficulties. I, have, I am selfish. Or, or I have these sins in my life. And I have these. And you're constantly looking at yourself to fix yourself. And you're constantly working on yourself, right? You need to stop working on yourself. And you need to start focusing on Jesus because by beholding him, we become transformed. By beholding him, you become transformed. I remember when Michael Jordan was big. A while back, some of you still remember when Michael Jordan was, you know, everything. You know, the commercials won't be like Mike. You would go to the playground to see kids playing and you would see kids sticking their tongue out. Because Michael Jordan, when he played, he would stick his tongue out. And you would see a bunch of young people sticking their tongue out, playing basketball, because they actually thought that sticking their tongue out would actually make, me a, make them a better player. It didn't. <laughs> Only end up, a lot of people get punched <laughs> and cut tongues. That's all it did. But the thing was that they, 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 they watched Michael Jordan so much, they observed him so much that they wanted to make every move that he made. They stuck their tongue out just like him did. And they did all things because by observing, you become changed. You become changed. We become changed not because we look at ourselves and we read self-improvement books. We become changed into what God wants us to be by putting our eyes on Jesus Christ. It may be our reset button this year includes taking your eyes off of yourself and putting them on Jesus and worshiping Jesus and wanting to become like Jesus and making him everything in your life and observing him. Maybe your reset button has to do with giving up. <laughs> giving up on your own efforts and putting your eyes on Jesus and becoming a disciple of Jesus Christ. I don't know what your resetting, reset button is going to take you in the year 2022. But today's sermon is to let you know that there is a reset button. Amen. Okay? So the biggest lesson that you can take from today, if you go home, and people ask you, what did the pastor preach about? You can say, pastor said that there is a reset button that we can hit in our lives and we can, we can become a new creation. That's it. That's it. Okay. And if you hit that reset button, God can do things with you and God will forget the past <laughs> completely. God will forget your past and God will take you into new, a, a, a new creation. And God will call you to service. And God will do amazing things through you. There is no limit to what you can do. You know, when God called Moses for that reset button, he said, well, first of all, no one's going to believe me. You know, who's going to believe me? Uh, anyway, who do I tell them that sent me? You know, all these excuses. Well, I can't even speak. First of all, God says, listen, I will go with you. All I need is your hands and feet. I will go with you. Number two, he said, all right, to show you how powerful I am, I'm not going to use you. I'm going to use that dry staff you have in your hand. I'm not even going to use you. Just, I'm going to use that dry staff to show you how powerful and what I can do. And with that dry staff, turned it into a snake, made the water in the Nile blood, opened the Red Sea, <laughs> hit a rock, water fell out of that dry staff. So if God can do that with a dry staff, what do you think he could do with you and me? What do you think he can do with us? There is 
a reset button. And God loves it. And God wants you to hit it. He wants a new creation and he wants to turn you into something bigger and greater than you are today. May God help us. And may God lead us this year as we hit 2022 to hit that reset button. It's available. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we we thank you so much. We thank you so much for giving us the opportunity to be here today. And the opportunity that you give us as Christians to be able to hit that reset button. That we can actually have the ability to, to look at ourselves and see what we are and see who we are. And actually desire to change. And desire to become everything that you want us to be. Give us that desire, Lord, to just be different. Give us the desire through your Holy Spirit to want to change. Because sometimes we don't want to change. Sometimes we fall in love with this world and we fall in love with who we are. And sometimes, Lord, we want to continue being who we are. Only your Holy Spirit can put in us the desire to change. And to become everything that you want us to be. Bless us, Lord. Bless us today. Help us to become what you want us to be. There are new frontiers for us. There are new frontiers that we haven't crossed. There are new frontiers that we haven't become. There are new things that you have for us. Our life isn't finished. It doesn't matter how old we are. It doesn't matter what we've done in the past. There are new frontiers that you are inviting us to. But sometimes we feel so incapable of reaching them. Unworthy, sinful, guilt. But today, Lord, I want you to help us to hit that reset button. Because once we hit that reset button, you forget the past. We look forward to our goal, which is Jesus Christ. And by looking forward to Jesus, we become everything that you want us to be. Thank you for that ability. Thank you for that gift. Thank you for that, because for that is what Jesus died on the cross for. We ask all this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. God bless you, people. Thank you for being with us here today. We want to give you a couple announcements. Uh, We have our giving. You can go to originchurch.com. We also have these boxes in the back back there where you can leave your offerings. Originchurch.com. You can go there and see giving. Or you can also text the words. Text the phone 561-462-5932 and text the word give. Uh, I think an announcement or something. Doris is uh, a um, a directory for the church. And uh, Doris, do, are, you, are there going to be pictures today being taken, whoever wants to? Not yet, okay. Okay. All right. So talk to Doris about, about that. We're going to begin beginning a directory in the church. And in that directory, we want to put what people do, not just a picture, what people do, because that way we can help each other out. Uh, so uh, remember our devotionals on, on, on Saturdays, I mean, every day at 9 a.m. And then at 7 p.m., you can join us. Wednesday night at um, at 8 p.m. We have prayer meeting, a discipleship class that we've been having now for about four months. Uh, a discipleship class that we have Monday nights at 8 o'clock on uh, WebEx. We invite you if anyone wants to join that discipleship class. And uh, we have a great time and we learn. We're learning to become disciples of Jesus Christ. 
uh, which is the most important thing, to become disciples of Jesus. Thank you very much for joining us. We, because of our situation, please be respectful today of people's space, okay? Uh, avoid hugging, avoid those kinds of things, because sometimes people are trying to keep that space, and you, we, we sort of force ourselves upon them. And so we were, just want to make it in general to please know the times that we live in and let us respect that so that people can still feel comfortable coming to church. Because some people will say, well, Pastor, I don't want to go to church because people start hugging you and kissing you, and I, I don't want to do that right now. So we be careful of that. Uh, be careful of taking your mask off and speaking close to each other. Be careful of those things. We, we want to enjoy the time here to come to church. And let's, let's not mess it up for, for anyone. We know we love each other. We know that. But because we love each other, let us respect that. And the poinsettias, the ladies can take them if they Okay, we have poinsettias up here. If there's some people who want to take them, you can, you can take them. J- just the poinsettias. Okay, leave these here. Okay. <laughs> And, uh, and the other plants, just to point, point, point set us. We don't want to be left bare. All right. God bless you. If you don't see me out there saying hi to you or shaking your hand, it's because of the same thing. Okay. So thank you. God bless you. And uh, we hope to see you again.